What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to go over the exhaust ports. So this is part two of the how to port LS cylinder heads um, at home. You know, guys who want to tackle tackle it yourself, kind of DIY type people. Those who want to save money. Those who want to um, just do it yourself, you know, something you can be proud of. So we're going to take a look here real quick at the stock exhaust port. You can see where I marked this. Uh, the best thing to do is use Dicom, but a Sharpie will get it done. So close look here. You can see the bad part is, is it doesn't always flow around to the complete edge of the gasket when you're using a sharpie because you're just getting where the felt is. So if you look in here you can see what the stock, kind of a close up of the stock exhaust port. So we're going to raise this roof up and I've been using sandpaper rolls, Tootsie Rolls as a lot of people call them. That's what I've been doing pretty much all the work with on these heads because I bought these uh, carbide bits from Summit. and. <clears throat> I've been using the Minn Kota die grinder, which I also got from Summit. Went to Harbor Freight and got this speed controller. It's a uh, router speed controller. That's what it's listed as. It turns the RPMs down, but I guess because the bits or burrs are so long, this is a six inch burrs. They just don't, uh, and I got them for cast iron also. They just don't uh, run good. They vibrate like crazy on the end to the point you think it's gonna fly out of the die grinder. Uh, with cast iron, I can make it work because I can bear down on the uh, port and get the vibration to quit, but um, on this aluminum, you know, you're gonna eat away so much material so fast that that's really not an option. Now, one thing I did try on this port is to chuck it up into a drill, and it works, but not real great just because it doesn't have enough power. And that's with an 18 volt drill so, anyways, this is a stock head. So let me uh, get to the head I've been porting on, really been doing work on, because that's what you're wanting to see. So let me get this one out of the way, and we'll take a look at it. All right, so here we go. These are the exhaust ports I've been working on on the other head. Um, not quite finished, but I'm getting close. Uh, going to try to show this one, but boy, it's got way too much light exposure, doesn't it? Probably the cylinder that is best, uh, closest to being finished would be this one. And you can see about how much I took down which was a good bit now this is the roof I got the head upside down so you can see I've raised it a good bit went in there and worked the valve guide alongside these edges 
or the edge of the valve guide. I really worked down through there because there's, if you watch the first video, hard to see it, but there's a bump there that reinforces the springs. And uh, I didn't want to take that out. A lot of people say you could get in trouble and have a spring crack through. So this was all done with 120 grit sandpaper roll. Um, it's getting close. I'm gonna try to do a little bit more valve uh, work. Unfortunately, it looks like there's a bunch of filings up in there. So I'm trying to take a look how I really work the backside. It's hard to see. But this gives you an idea of what I'm doing, what you may want to do on yours. I'm not saying this is 100% the right way, but this should definitely help the exhaust port flow. I think these are somewhere around 170-ish. CFM at 600 lift stock. So I'm doing a lot more work on the exhaust than I am on the intake. Now one thing we need to talk about is that's almost one and five eighths inches. Okay. The gasket is that size. So, <clears throat> if you go all the way out to the gasket and you're one of these guys that wants to run a turbo and reuse the stock manifolds, which is a common practice, people flip them and, and, and use that. One thing that you need to know is that it's not quite one and five eighths inches this away okay and that would start up here not where the port is but one in five eighths from up here and this is less than one and a half it's like 1.4 inches when you uh, measure it out with a set of cap calipers so and it's not quite one in five eighths opening so if you open these all the way up to where the gasket is, or where the gasket rests, the factory gasket, your exhaust ports are going to dump into the edge of the exhaust manifold if you're reusing stock manifolds. So that's one thing you need to keep in mind. You're actually going to hurt yourself if you go all the way to the edge there. Now, I'm using one and seven eighths headers, but I also know that probably eventually this car is going to have a turbo, so I'm not going to open it all the way up. But I'm not going to, the plan is not to reuse factory headers, factory manifolds, but to instead use the hooker turbo manifold setup. But anyways, kind of rambling here. Give y'all guys a look. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna order some uh, cross buff Scotch Bright buff. Uh, I don't know if you call them pads. They're looking more like balls that go on the end of a uh, screw on mandrel. So I don't know if I'll go that far. Some people do, but that's pretty smooth there. 120 grit. Don't want your intake ports that smooth, but exhaust, you can get them as smooth as you want. So I'll update um, as I go along. Probably the next one I show might be the intakes. It just depends on what I feel like working on at the time. It may be completed exhaust, but if you haven't already, 
hit the subscribe button that way you can know when the new updates there's a bell icon next to subscribe if you want to get notifications uh, comment like the video share it let's try to uh, grow the channel and uh, if you're interested and uh, maybe we can get some more projects fired up thanks for watching y'all